Oh. Hey. Back in the swing of this. Where's my mouse? There it is. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> I muted myself. What a knucklehead. That's how long it's been since I've been doing this. Yeah, so sick there's no sound. Try that. Well, that may be a little too hot. Um, so start again. Went to San Jose. Played a show in San Jose last Saturday. While we were there, before I played, slight tickle in the throat. Thought it was allergies. Sunday, I went to the chiropractor, and I was all tense in my shoulders, in my neck. Um, like, like I had worked out for hours the day before. I'm like, man, I really went hard last night. Uh, turns out that's not what it was. Uh, usually when I start getting a cold or something, I will get uh, pain, like be really sore in my shoulders and in my neck. Sure enough, I got a cold, so I had to take it easy because for me, a cold will quickly develop into some form of bronchitis, uh, which destroys my voice. Yeah, perfect excuse for a massage. So I spent last week trying to lay low, not destroy my voice and recover. Uh, in the process, I set up my Twitch stream and... So now I can go back and forth, although it's a little annoying because I have to reconnect through OBS every time instead of it just remembering. YouTube's not a big deal. Twitch is a little bit more involved. But I swear, whenever things slightly slow down for me, we'll be doing some stuff on Twitch. And that'll be mainly like stuff I'm not going to put on this channel or any sort of... I've just come to the realization that if I want to do like any sort of just let you want to call it streaming, let's play, whatever we call it now, that will just go over on Twitch because it's mainly just to hang out with everybody uh, while I'm playing or doing something. Uh, everything else will land here. So like I said, I've still got a new, not so new stuff now to go through, uh, which I was going to do last week, but didn't feel good. So that'll still go here. These will still stay here. You know, clipping anything out of this will stay here. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, question, I see that I have, yeah, I've got a few of you here. When people send me videos to react to or comment on, should I do those at the beginning of the stream or should I do those at the end of the stream? Does anybody even care when I do those? Because I've been saving them for the end of the stream, but maybe people would rather it be at the beginning because maybe that's a bit more interesting. The end? Okay. I got one for the end. And you'll have to pardon me because my... my I still have a little bit of a cough, so... I can feel one. I can feel one happening now. Tom's two cents. Yes, you should. You should start a channel like that. You could partner with Jay. All right. So, for those that weren't aware, this is a viewer call-in show. So uh, you follow the directions to get into Discord. And through there, and you can call in, because that's mainly what this is supposed to be, even though we do use news topics to kind of kickstart a conversation. Yeah, cover your cough, otherwise you'll get us all sick. Hey, man, I cough into my elbow. All right. 
There's that. All right, first up, first up, what do we got here? We've got the Crew Motorfest. They're uh, throwing us a bunch of screenshots and teasers. So this is the first one uh, with your year one pass. At least they're trying to tell you what's in the year one pass. Just not be like, give us money. You don't know what's coming. Tom's running a fever now. I, that was quick. I got a fever. More cowbell. Um, so we've got a couple Ferraris in this one. A 308 and an S9, a SF90. And then you can get the Chevrolet Chevelle SS. Another year one pass goodie. And then because they've had the beta, we've had, they've had some people upload some shots for us. So there's the, oh, you can't see it. Um... How do I? Hold on. Down in the corner, it'll tell you. It'll tell us who is the person. So kind of cool. Good looking stuff here. Bring that back. And one more. We've got a. We've got a quick twelve second little teaser here of the uh what is this electric odyssey playlist so again just something that you can look forward to doing in the crew i i'm still moderately interested in this i don't know if anybody else is but kind of looks neat all right there's the end of that now ea sports f1 23 has several replays available now. So we've got the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, the Belgian Grand Prix, and Bahrain. Bahrain, Bahrain. And then there are some patch notes. Patch notes, I've got a cough again. Brutal. All right. Get rid of this. Uh, patch notes. Going through some things here. They have the addition of AI drivers to league racing. They fix an issue in some instances where unrealistic lap times can be set in time trial. After triggering an instant replay, all time trial leaderboards have been reset. Way to, way to find that problem there yeah that's a pretty quiet cough thank you believe me it's not quite on this end uh fix an issue where in two-player career drivers would receive an incorrect tire allocation at weekends falling i am just amazed is it just me or are people not um, i mean i know that they're not going to find everything when something is released because there's so many more people out in the wild that will play this stuff. But I am, I am really surprised at the amount of fixes that they've been issuing. It's not like improvements or tweaks. We're, we're, these are flat out fixes. Like if we want to say addition, like these two lines, may not have been something that they thought about doing or they knew that they were going to release later. Okay, fine. But the amount of fixes that I see, I mean, I appreciate the fixes. I'm, I'm not, I'm not crapping on them for fixing something, but I'm just surprised at the amount like this right here, improved AI speed when set above a hundred difficulty. That doesn't bother me. That seems pretty reasonable to update in a, in a world where we have the ability to update a game, that feels like an update. But to have so many fixes, what what patch are we on? Eight? Just seems, to me, this just seems like a lot. So, I don't think I went away. Hopefully I didn't. 
Modern gaming at its best. In fact, I need to go that way. Did they release the anti-cheat yet? Maybe, uh, maybe later after no one plays. Yeah, no, they did not release the anti-cheat yet. <clears throat> so that's what's going on in the F1 23 universe. Like I said, I'm just surprised that there's so many, that we have so many fixes. Uh, for those that are still playing GT7, you've got another look at some cars here. They've already figured out what's going on. This is a C1 Corvette. This is a Corolla. This is the new... Well, this is some sort of ambulance back here. Got to have the ambulance. Um, and then this is... A Maser the new Maserati. Maserati. So that's looks like it's a an upcoming update. How many people are playing F123? Um let me see if I can find out real quick. Hold on. Hold the phone. Can will this work? Uh, can I search? I don't give a shit. Uh, search. Go back here. F1. 23. Will it come up like that? No. Uh, formula. 1. 23? How does it come up? How do we make this thing? It, I feel like maybe F1. 23? Nope. EA F1? It's right in front of me, stupid. <laughs> it's right here. Current players, 7,900. 30 day gain dropped by 1400, 30 day percentage dropped by 26% in 30 days. Can we click on this? Yes, we can. So we can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So basically with every patch, no, this is daily. So their daily is here. Where's their all? So we started here. And we've had a decline. So 7,900 30 minutes ago. All time is at 13. 24 hour peak is 8,200. Steam doesn't do that, no. But this is Steam charts. And this is only with people that allow it to be seen. I was kind of curious. I thought there might be like little bumps in here for the patches. One, two, three, four, no. Because maybe, maybe like a patch. How about over a month? Brrr, look at that. <laughs> Going crazy. So yeah, we went here. What's this all about? Stretching it out. So, I mean, they've decreased a little bit. I don't know how much this stuff usually falls off. 7,900 doesn't seem like that many. I don't know. How many do you think is a lot for iRacing? Yeah, this is only Steam player count. This doesn't, this doesn't include, like, uh consoles or anything so consoles are going to be considerably more than this yeah consoles are going to be way more uh we could go to i think there's a way to search on twitch if we go to twitch hey 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 
I know that that's a metric that developers also pay attention to. I don't care. You guys get it anyways. Uh, let's see. Can we search games? Let's do... You can see how much I use all this crap. Uh, 1,900 viewers? What about at in this moment? I mean, you've got... You've got a bunch of live channels. I don't know how. It says 1,900. I don't know if that's an average, but I know that's a metric that they typically use to help them. I know there used to be a, a Twitch chart that would show you, like, the decline or the gain in amount of viewers. Yeah. Switch this, go back to here. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, which one is it? We'll start with this one. Uh, Oklahoma is releasing tomorrow. If you'd like... A chance to get the DLC for free in American Truck Simulator. You can go to Twitter, simply reply with a screenshot that you've added it to your Steam wish list, wish list for a chance to win. Um, I have done so. Come on, free key. So anyway, if you want a chance to win a key, you can do that. Oh, it's the worst getting over being sick and having to talk. Uh, screenshot of Oklahoma. And we've got a nice little trailer here. We're going to turn that off. I said we're going to turn that. Thank you. We got a good little trailer going there. Release day is tomorrow for Oklahoma. A nerd alert, your favorite one. That's okay. You are allowed to have ATS as your favorite game right now. Just some screenshots of their new content for both ATS and ETS. And this is Dodge City. Again, a little bit of a teaser for what you can expect to see in Kansas. But Oklahoma is the one coming out tomorrow. You just hired your 13th driver? Holy cow. I don't think I've ever hired a driver. I don't think I've ever made it that far in. Again, Oklahoma comes out. I got to put that on my list for us to drive get to so if you want to know what Dodge City looks like here you go an American truck simulator for Kansas add to your steam wish list it says and then they did a 1.48 update for ATS last week they made some changes uh, new Texas DLC content uh, it's included in that update. Uh, equivalent of 500 real miles have been added over eight different roads, interstates, and highways, including one of the most well-known interchanges in Texas. So you got some stuff that's come to Texas. Uh, they In the 1.46 update, they introduced the gallery feature, a one-stop shop for all your images. Uh, now they, they're they working with that. Washington DLC Custom City Intros. Special Transport DLC Update. Reworked Vehicle Transport Trailers. Found some spare capacity in between other... Uh, let's see, what are they? Oh, Transport Trucks, Cars, SUVs. There we go. Uh, this one I thought was inter interesting. Per State Map Exploration. 
We know how many drivers enjoy the challenge, uh, challenging task of getting 100% map exploration. Tom, are you there? Have you done 100%? There's <laughs> it's like, don't talk about ATS. I don't have the time, it's dangerous. Uh, we know this isn't easy, so we've introduced a new UI window which can be accessed uh, by clicking on your map exploration in the top left uh, of the world map. Upon clicking on this, a new window will open, showing you a list of the U.S. states with their respective flag and a breakdown of your exploration of each one. That's pretty cool. So anyway, they did a, a whole host of things there. I thought the map thing was kind of interesting for completion. Matt says, I hired drivers based solely on how wacky their picture looks. Am I doing hiring? No, that's exactly how you should hire. ETS got drivers in garages, made good money, got bored, not touched in months. Tom says he's 45%. For me, ATS goes in waves. I'll play it for a while. I'll get bored. Come back. All right, we're going to mute this so I don't get busted. And here we go. The unstoppable Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Wide Body from the Fast and the Furious Saga will be in Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 starting day one. But that's not all. More vehicles from the Fast and Furious will come with post-launch updates. So here you go. If you're looking forward to Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, you're going to get a Hot Wheels in the form of a Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Wide Body. I do like the wide body. I wish my Challenger was a wide body. It gives me a little bit of Group 5 vibes. One, a quarter mile at a time. I like how there it's a Hot Wheels, but it's got tire smoke. I just thought that was kind of funny. You've had it since day one, but never touched it until just recently. No kidding. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, Ian Bell has graced us with some screenshots of GT Revival. There you go, in this one, plenty of GT Racing classics from our earliest seminal games are coming your way. The Audi is just more polished. The team are really pushing the boundaries in all areas. Next one is Hello World, unedited in-game screenshot for the win. And there you get a little sample of their GT revival, the GTR part. Um, all this, I am not a huge, I will say this, I am not a huge fan. This kind of goes to our discussion last week when we were, or the week before when we were talking about rain. I'm not a huge fan of reflections on the windshield because your eye does not process it the same as you do in the real world. Now it definitely is distracting in the real world, but you can kind of tune it out unless it's got such glare that it washes out the windshield in your vision, but you can kind of tune it out and you can kind of look through it. I find it much more difficult to do that in game because it is a 2d plane and not 3d. Here we go, GTR, blah. <laughs> I like hype, get hyped until you're not, but it's fun to be hyped. Oh boy, screenshots, let's see some game footage. Oh, I don't think they're anywhere near game footage yet. I don't think. Not anything that they would be comfortable seeing. But they're just trying to let you know that it exists. And here, here's your, here's your logo. As we can see, it's a, just a transparent, it's a... PNG, so the, the black is not actually black here. That's just on a black background. Because if you look at the other one, it was across the window net, and you could see the window net in this part. Uh, not a bad logo. I like stuff you can read pretty easy. A little bit of style to it. It's not bad. We will wait with bated breath. Oh. Everyone. We have a trailer for Truck Driver, the American Dream release date. I'm going to have to, we're going to have to, you know what? I'm not going to. <laughs> I don't want to get a copyright strike, so we're going to mute. 
going to mute this. We're going to pop it out since it's longer. Truck Driver, The American Dream is coming out on the 26th of September, 2023. PS5, Xbox, although it doesn't say PC. I would imagine it comes out on PC. You got your, you got your cow catchers on the front. Change your truck colors. How many projects has Ian Bell started? I do not know. Dr. Longmont says, I'm not getting hyped for anything with the letters G, T, and R in it until I start. Yeah, right? We've been burned by GTR3. The American, yeah, the American dream. Yeah. Eagles. Live the American dream. Apparently the American dream. I like that. <laughs> you must be going down, uh, down south there. Getting you a little bit of like Arizona, New Mexico flavor. Anyway, 26th of September. It doesn't mention PC. Kind of weird. More like how many is he abandoned? American truck driver getting you all hyped, Tom. I think we have to play it. I think we got to do it. I want to know what the story is. If you were excited about the season update to the World of Outlaws game. Uh, here you go. Don't forget. Now this is midgets that are coming. And it's the Extreme Outlaw. It is not USAC. It is the Extreme Outlaw series, which is under the World of Outlaws banner slash dirt car. So anyway, August 15th is when the update is coming. You can get it then. Uh, get excited, I guess. Do do do. What's Indian looking truck doing in American truck game? No, that's it's more. That's more like to me. That looks more like New Mexico, Arizona, like Texas, kind of south southwest. Jerry says, I think it's a bit strange that inline four goes for a GT3 for their first car. That's a bit boring. Uh, well, let's be honest with ourselves. GT3 is still one of the most popular things to race in sim racing. So why wouldn't you? Now, I believe they're, they've either talked about or there's been a teaser of like, some sort of like Ford Escort, like the old RS stuff. Um, I know it's not just GT3. And if you haven't, or if you've been under rock, uh, maybe you didn't know that F1 Manager 23 is out. Get excited if you like management sims. Anyway, it's available now. You can grab that. Will iRacing get, get out a new tire model for rain? I imagine they have to do something. Have we done the AMS 1.5 chat? What do you mean by that, Gluten? In, in what regard? And iRacing last week dropped dropped it on everyone. Straight four, not inline four. You're right. I I always do it, say it wrong, or when I type it into Twitter to look. When I type it in to look, I for whatever reason I do inline four, not straight four.
well is better, not mind blowing. I haven't even touched it because I refuse to give that game uh, any more coverage. So I've heard a lot of people like it. I've heard some people are a little bit more tempered on it, but still says it's an improvement. Um, it's always difficult, especially when I don't put my hands on it to make a good um, assertion of if it is indeed good, because it's hard to... People get so hyperbolic uh, about, oh, it's amazing, it's this, and it's like a small improvement. It might be a big improvement. Um, I'm just not touching it. Is there a band manager type game? Probably. <laughs> if I say anything negative about AMS2, hell will descend upon him. No, I don't worry about that anymore. I'm just not interested in covering the game um, purely from a uh, an ethical or moral standpoint. Joe says, iRacing Rain isn't coming until the new graphic and tire model update, so not so soon. Uh-oh. Dr. Lamont says, GT3 is a strange mistress. Folks will ignore your new game if it's the main thing that you show because it is very oversaturated. We'll, we'll also complain when your game doesn't have it, i.e., yep, that is, that is the conundrum. And I will say that the people that go, say, boring, they're not incorrect, but they're, it is a small amount of people. I think the sim racing public at large still likes GT3. Joe says, AMS2 is the best it has felt, and that's saying something coming from me. Well, I mean, that's good. It's an improvement. It doesn't mean it's right. Or good, but it's improvement. <laughs> All right. iRacing dropped this on us. July 2023 development update from Greg Hill. Uh, it's been a few months since we last provided an update regarding our current and future sim development plans. To begin, we have a lot of exciting track projects in the works. So they're talking about... Uh, the following tracks have already been announced and are in various states of pre-production and full production... Portum Algarve. Do we call it Algarve? Algarve? Fuck, I don't know. Portamao. Uh, Mizano. Mugello. Mugello's gonna be fun. I always say this wrong. Hukekoe. Hukeko? I don't know. Len. Led. Ledenon? I've never heard of that one. And the rework to Zanvort. Boy, I just sound like I'm not even talking English anymore. I'm just, it's Algarve. There's no E. Okay. Have we mentioned Navarra? Our crew just returned from that trip. What great timing for these projects. Algarve. Yeah, no E. You coke? <laughs> yes, American spotted, yes. Which is funny that people say that because I hear foreigners try to say the words in English and they totally get it wrong. <laughs> so I just, I I get it. But it is kind of funny when people say that because I, I listen to people say English words incorrect all the time. So iRacing is a platform, blah, blah, blah. Um, looks like Short Oval will see additions in the future with Slinger. That's cool. Winchester is going to be awesome. Uh, Kern, which is south of me. And that will have uh, the Dirt Oval and regular Oval. We've got Wheatland, Lucas Oil, Dirt Road. Says it will be revisiting UK with addition of multiple new circuits. While much of the above is longer term, we did want to explain we will handle two of our most imminent projects that are coming in September, Circuit Zandvoort and Kern County. First, Kern is a unique facility. Uh, you get both for $11.95. Nice. That is incorrect. English does have a standard pronunciation. 
and you can trace it clear back to when they decided to deviate from accepting French and then adopting French words into the pronunciation, and you can see the deviation there. As a Portuguese speaker, you were doing fine, Billy. That's funny. Now, for Zanvort, one of the very first European tracks released in iRacing. <clears throat> Duh, wait. Uh, the historic version of Zanvort and the current day version have, single, have a significant difference. As such, we will be keeping the historic version of Zanvort on the service and add the current day track to the same package, which is nice. Um, they're talking later on such upgrades include in the works some of our high, most highly used content, such as Brands Hatch, Okiyama, Alton Park, as well as our older NASCAR oval tracks. They're just making improvements there. Artwork overhauls for Road Atlanta. Uh, speaking of racing line, significant progress has been made these past weeks on their rain project. Our recent investments into art hiring have led to our car track dev team doubling in size, which is nice. Technical management team has added wonderful industry veterans. Our animation team has also doubled, and we have great momentum on projects that really convey the sheer physicality of the race car to your screens and headsets, as well as additional shifting and emotive systems. Uh, our tire and physics engine team has tripled and are working with a determined focus on the future of our great tire model. The evolution needed to keep delivering the most authentic experience possible. Do quicker. Uh, Squid says, GT, uh, think GT3 done well can be quite fun and enjoyable in sim. However, when done badly, it's horrible. Think the early efforts in AC and iRacing have put a few people off of them. I would not disagree with that. If you get a good balanced GT3 race going, it actually can be fun. I actually don't mind racing GT3 cars. Um, I do think that when done correctly, it can provide actually a pretty good race. I think it just gets a bad rap because there's just so much of it out there. And a good portion of it is not done well. You'll be able to flip the bird to other drivers, right? That would probably not. But if they do it, that'll be hilarious. iRacing is doing a lot coming up. Can't wait, says Ivan. I, I, I mean, they've got a lot going on. It'll be interesting to see like when they can execute uh, and how well they execute. Uh, let's see. It says tire deformation models, tire carcass, torsional deflection, contact patch, finite element model, physics rate, heat buildup, and gradient tread profile. The team is energized, and these terms and tests are flying about daily. We'll have to do a feature with the experts on this when the time is right. I mean, sure. Hopefully it doesn't make it worse. Terry says, I don't like GT3 because I like small old cars without any downforce. I'm old. I like those too. I like it all. There's very few cars that I actually don't like racing. If you were to ask me if I want to drive a car all on its own, um, I definitely don't like slower cars to like make a hot lap with. But if, you know, you get in a race, I, I'm pretty okay with most things as long as is it feels like it drives somewhat correctly. That indie motorcycle game does that. Forgot the name. Does what? Oh, 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 the emotes. Jerry says, I'm also hyped for iRacing in its future. Sky says, the time is now. Cue technical buzzwords, right? Uh, this was mentioned in, oh, wait, no. Do, do, do. These main systems can only be pushed so far without also seeing to our foundational sim engine itself. The team has invested the better part of a year uh, working through the very core of our code base, overhauling and modernizing the architecture and preparing our many systems to better leverage multi-threading and tasking. You have seen glimpses of the great results these efforts will yield with the dramatic load time improvements last season. You will see more this coming season as the car count, unique cars, not field size, 
is increased substantially. I know I was watching somebody that talked about they thought it was going to be field size. I'm like, they whenever they say car count, they mean unique cars, which is good because I don't know why it has to take so many uh, or so many resources. But this is great. And they are only scratching the surface. Wait until you see slash hear what they have in store for audio. Again, good stuff. Track day R. Yeah. Uh, this was mentioned in a previous blog, and it's worth bringing up again. Oval Racing is going through a similar process to what we just released with Dirt Racing. Oval Refresh has a full team of testers, vehicle dynamics engineers, tire developers, dynamic track developers collaborating with one another to evaluate the model and find opportunities for improvement, ultimately create a more realistic and enjoyable experience. I have to say, racing the 87 stock cars is probably the most fun I have ever had racing ovals in iRacing. Just flat out, I like the way the cars drive. I like the feedback that it provides. Uh, it is, they are just, you could give me a standalone game of the iRacing 87 stock cars, uh, and I would be perfectly happy with that. I would totally buy. If you could... Wrap that same type of feeling into others. Can you imagine them doing like a NASCAR Legends standalone where they took like their 2003 and then they do an 87, a mid 90s. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoop, couldn't couldn't mute it there. That would be really cool. Uh, I have tr recently I did try all of the new like the the current gen trucks, Xfinity and and uh, Cup cars, and they're fine. Um, something it's lost in translation there. I just like the eighty seven Cup cars. They're they're fun. Squid says I agree. Any sim car done well is fun, regardless of speed. I'm currently running things from a Porsche nine fifty six to a Turbant and leagues and many. There you go. That's that's always been my stance is if it's done well, uh, I can always find the fun in the car. That would be great. All yes on the NASC. Yeah, I, I think it'd be really cool. I again, I just think they've done a really nice job with the 87 cup cars. OK, you felt that one. Sorry. It was a surprise. It came up on me. Doesn't this stuff exist in AC? What stuff exists in AC? I have no idea what you're talking about. Like all the things that they're talking about up here? Uh, are we talking vanilla AC or modded AC? Yes, I miss standalone games too, Matt. Uh, so our road racing licensing system will see a significant addition in the near future as we look to improve the experience of racing in cars with dramatically different characteristics and the pitfalls that can be experienced when trying something less familiar. More info to follow and even more significant system changes are being explored for the future, but one step at a time here. I've been saying this for years now. Ad nauseum. Oh, yeah, yeah, Star Fox. I get what you're saying. Um, is that once they're offering... Trying to quell that next cough coming up. Um, once they started offering more than a, you know, a few cars in a category, especially with large diverging categories, open wheel, tin top, kind of stuff. Uh, it just doesn't work anymore. I would even argue that some of the oval stuff doesn't really transfer all that well, but you can kind of make, you can make an argument on the oval side that it's all a ladder system. It's a little less true, although I've seen it done. It's a little less true on the road side. Uh, I think when you have more licenses, people will, that are, because there are a lot of people that are very protective of their I rating. 
I think you will find more people try something different because it doesn't affect the I rating that they've built up. In other words, if there is a, a GT3 driver and they only focused on GT3 and they built their I rating and their license system, you know, way up to a high level and they don't want to go back the other way. They don't want to have that affected if they try an F4 or something like that, that they think might be fun. This is to me, this is a good step in the right direction. It's a solution to solve that problem. It allows people to try something else and not worry about their I rating in their favorite discipline to be affected. Here it says, I've been missing that feature, one IR for every car type. Yeah, I, I've been saying it for years. I think, I think, number one, they have too many options right now for official racing. I think they need to rotate things in and out. Number two, the license system has to be completely revamped to make it so that other people try other cars and don't worry about the I rating that they built up in a specific discipline to be affected negatively. Uh, okay, here we go. Our sim UI is being replaced by a modern and designer-friendly UI framework. Be careful, all the people that hate change that still like using the old, try to use the old member site, get mad about that. Um, unlike our current UI, which uses rasterized art, the new UI will be vector-based and highly flexible. The user experience will also benefit from this effort with a user-focused redesign of complex pages like the option screen. And then we'll all go, where's the thing that I used to be able to find the thing at? It'll take most of us uh, two days of messing with it to remember, and the rest of the community will whine and cry because their memory doesn't work at all, and they're lost. Our web team is as busy as ever working on many improvements and new features. They need to make the licenses actually mean something first. You can get an A license without ever running a race. Yes, I don't disagree with that. But that costs them money. And I don't know that they're willing to sacrifice the money part of it in order to have that happen. I don't disagree. I think that they should totally have that um, progression to it. The hard part is if you, I don't, there's, there's a plus and a minus to it. You probably would get better racing, but then you're also narrowing the pool of people to drive, which means you can't have as many races available. So in your A class series, you would need to have way less races than you would your D class because you need the point of iRacing is to get as many people into a time slot as possible so you split in the correct split. <coughs> Sorry. But that way, so you split in the correct split. Uh, when you have too many races, it dilutes the pool and you tend to get a smaller group participating. Moreover, when you have other disciplines that are also racing in similar time areas, that also dilutes the pool. They need a complete revamp of how the races are in official races, like how often, what time slots, all that stuff. Then you can, then you can make the license system mean more. Until that happens, you're kind of screwing yourself because you're just making it even worse it's the antithesis of the result that you want from the system that they've developed and still are the best at, which is the ranking system. But it doesn't work when you don't have enough people. Oh, at the bottom it says, while our unparalleled multiplayer competition and community systems have always been cornerstones of the iRacing experience, 
We have long planned to deliver more value and more expansive product experience to our customers. Expect deep new SIM systems and ways to engage with the product with an initial focus on a realistic and engaging career mode that is being built true to the authentic nature of what iRacing and real world racing is all about. Blah, blah, blah. With a, I'm still recovering from being sick. With a team composed of devs who ran racing teams at the highest level of real world racing, along with the experience of an excellent veteran sim gaming design director and our existing design bench strength, the design function at iRacing is stronger than it ever has been. Hopefully you're not taking cues from monster games in this uh, career mode because it's pretty bland, dated, and boring. Uh, but this... I think this is actually telling you how many people engage with the AI and how important I think AI is still still is in racing games and sim racing. I think people kind of look at this and go, "Oh, psh, this is dumb. Why are you No, no. I think you're missing I think you're missing what they're putting down. They would have never started messing with AI to begin with if they didn't see some sort of value. And now that that AI has been, you know, tested and it's coming along and I think there's still some stuff to work out when it comes to the multiplayer AI stuff. Um, there seems to be a variance there that isn't happening when you do it on your own. But when you race with it on your own, man, it's really, really good. And I still think, I think it takes more tweaking to get it right when you're doing it with multiplayer with the AI. But they would not be doing this if people were not engaging with the AI. They would they would abandon all of this uh, and they would just leave it as is. Instead, they're actually going further with it. I wish they kind of would have said something about maybe the dirt side if they if they'd made any progress on that for AI, but um when people start, oh, it's all about you know, multiplayer ranked online and all this stuff like, yes, but there has to be a significant portion of the consumer base that is messing with AI. Otherwise they, they would never do this. There's no, there's no reason. All right. We got some screenshots here. There's your, there's your water. Old content new content with their PBR upgrade and resolution boost. Uh, the 3D curbs I thought was interesting. <coughs> they finally realized how many people have eye racing and hate people. Ha. I just... I, I have fun with a select amount of people. I've gotten over just racing in public stuff. I just have no interest, at least right now. It just does not appeal to me whatsoever. Just don't, just don't care. So, like, getting together with a group of people and running um, or just driving on my own is much more satisfying. I wouldn't be online against humans. You guys are all so much better than me. There must be. Th <laughs> it just takes practice, but there's people that are like that. They just, they don't want the pressure of what an online race kind of feels like. And I get that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just think for so long, we've held multiplayer gaming as the, the Holy grail, the bastion of, of a gaming experience that we just kind of forgot about AI. Yes, the people on iRacing are the reason I'm not on iRacing anymore. I, you are not the first person I've heard to say that. I would, if I wasn't having good experiences offline, if the AI wasn't there, I would struggle to keep paying uh, a subscription for what they have. So we got 3D curbs. I think this is uh, the rework. More wet. Uh, grass looks great. Trees, not so much. Rework of Zandvoort. Got some more wet wetness going there. I mean, yeah, it looks cool. 
This is wild. I wonder how this is going to perf uh, impact performance. Mulwada, Mulwada, Zanvort. So they got it. They're going in. All right. I asked earlier, people said videos that I get sent, I should do at the end so we can talk about those. People in iRacing aren't any different than other online gaming people. No, they're not. <coughs> Man, I couldn't get to that one. Jeez. It sneaks up on me. Sorry. They, but that's like why I don't play multiplayer and any, anything else either. I just don't have the wherewithal. Not interested. I remember when uh, The Division was teased and then it got said that uh, it was multiplayer only. And I was so disappointed because The Division, the first one, looked so interesting. And I was so disappointed that it was multiplayer only. Yes, that is true. Hence, sticking to a league these days. League is probably your best bet. If you don't, if you can't get into a league, you know, obviously doing the, trying to find one, doing the multiplayer uh, public stuff to try and find a league is obviously a route to go. But leagues, if you like multiplayer, leagues are probably your best option. But even those have pitfalls but if you can find I think if you can find a league with the same mentality uh, that you have for an online race I think you're going to have a pretty good time Green Odokan says the division looked incredible at the time when I heard it was multiplayer only it took every bit of steam I had yep I was exactly in the same boat I was so disappointed that the division was multiplayer I did, so my son played the Division and the Division 2. Uh, so he and I played the Division, first Division together, and that was fun, uh, but nothing that I really wanted to interact with other people, so I stayed out of what it was called, the Dark Zones or whatever they were. And then when we did Division 2, I literally did it on a free weekend, and we burned through it all in a free weekend. I never paid for the game. Would do a league, but generally don't do races longer than 15 minutes unless I'm playing full F1 full season. Well, there you go. But that's the beauty, right? We have we have options. Okay, so what was sent to me originally was let me get me out of the way here so I give credit where credit's due. DJ <laughs> YJ. I've watched stuff here for a while, uh, off and on, depending on which one that depending on the type of video that he puts out but they're typically the ones that I click on are entertaining this particular one somebody sent me but then he mentioned Ben so there's La Roca Sim Racing and these are about driving standards and I know I've talked about this sort of before Yes, thumbs up for options. That's really all I'm looking for. When we go do a game, I'm looking for options. Uh, okay, so. If I end up breaking this out into a video, uh, I will credit and link and all that stuff. Right now, you can just find this. This was about three weeks ago. I don't do any... I won't show any, like, brand new stuff. Because I don't think that's fair. But this is... This is about three weeks old. And... Here I am, LeBrock Sim Racing, and hopefully this works. Hey everyone, Ben here. Now I found myself shaken and stirred by Chris Rogers' latest Formula 4 race video from Watkins Glen, to the extent to which I had to have a lie down afterwards. If you haven't seen it, there's some chopped up clips running in the background now, which Chris kindly gave me. But when we're done here, go and watch it in its entirety. There's a link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> you all are wild. Okay, so I didn't watch this one. I actually watched the uh, part of the other one just to get an idea what it was. <laughs> I like how... The, what are you doing? When you're in the red, the, the driver in the red spun out and they're just like 
full on like, nope, don't care. Getting right back on the track. I'm on the rumble strip, so I'm okay. But not having the awareness to know that <laughs> the rumble strip is still part of the track. I. Good. Huh. Okay. Description. I promise you won't be disappointed. But what's immediately obvious already is that the driving standards here are a mess. And these are 2K strength of field splits. You'd be justified in ex Those are 2K drivers? Oh. Okay. That's interesting. Expecting better. But I think I know why they're a mess. It's not because people can't drive the F4 car. It's not because this is a particularly challenging car and track combination. I think it's because too many that, sim racers what? lack a vital quality when it comes to what is going on? and ultimately realizing the underlying speed that they might have. Patience. Patience to wait for the right time to mount an overtake. Patience to accept that if there's an incident ahead, you might need to slow down a bit. Patience. This is something that I've always said. People tend to drive off the nose of the car and do not look ahead. So part of the problem is people learn bad habits uh, about driving off the nose of their car. So when they hot lap or they're practicing, they're driving based off of what the nose of their car is doing. They're not, how do I explain this? They're not really looking ahead. They are, but they aren't. They're more focused on what's happening directly in front of them, even though that they've practiced the, the track a million times and they've decided that they know where the track and the racing line is and all that. That's great. Um, but you have to look beyond your nose when you're actually in a group racing. You would avoid 90 to 95% of this stuff if you just looked ahead. Sorry, says people just memorize their driving inputs and ignore what is going on around them. That's exactly what's going on. There's The race craft is not there. They're not being able to be put in a different scenario or situation and just not completely grenade. If a car in front of them is not doing the exact same thing that they're doing, uh, they will just run right over them. Uh, the one that always kind of makes me curious is like when I race, um, especially if I don't know what the car in front of me is going to do, I will pull one way or the other. So in case they hit the brakes early, I will at least be able to miss them and try to evade, you know, go around whatever's happening. I see a lot of people just get right on the, the rear of another car and then they get surprised by the person hitting the brakes in front because, look, maybe they felt like they didn't, um, they were slightly off of their line or they got distracted by the car behind them. There's all kinds of things that happen and they leave themselves no room for escape. Uh, and then they just pile into the car in front of them. See it all the time. To accept that if you've made a mistake and you need to rejoin, you have to wait. Yeah, Guitar Hero, not like me. Do so. Now look, everybody makes mistakes and we can all be guilty of getting... Fear of being killed or maimed in a huge crash would help a lot. Eh. When I raced, I didn't think about that stuff. I don't think you can really race. I think you weigh out your chances of success. Um, it is not that you have a fear of getting hurt. It is that if you do something that results in you getting hurt, that usually means that you're also not going to finish the race or you're driving, you know, off the track stuff that doesn't maximize your potential to win or to do well. So, yes, I think we kind of use that as a, a stand-in for what actually, it's not fear, and it's not, you know, none of those things actually happen. If you are scared of getting hurt, if you are scared of the car, if, you know, a huge crash, if you're racing like that, you're not really racing. Um, you know, if you're, if you're an owner driver and you're racing out there with your owner uh, what I, would I say, your owner's hat on and you're trying to avoid all these things because, you know, I want to make it to the track next week. Like, you're really not racing. You're in self-preservation mode. If you're racing, uh, you don't think about all of that stuff. 
you when I was in the car myself, I didn't I didn't think anything about getting hurt or all that. It was a calculated risk. Will I make it? Will I be faster? Will I gain a position if I do this thing? Now, the result of me doing a high risk maneuver is is injury, but that's a byproduct. Joe says you are my brake marker, so don't brake early, or it's or it's on you. Hear that all the time. Oh, that's that's a uh, that's really stupid. <laughs> You're my brake marker. Uh, no, <laughs> but that's why I laugh sometimes. Cause like, now nah, I'm gonna cough again. I don't think people realize that your brake markers change when your tires wear, or there you get a draft. Or you don't get the same run out of the corner. Like, how do these people still race when they're just so programmed at one spot? And if you're using a car in front of you as the brake marker, that's even worse. Uh, Sky says, you are not scared of getting hurt. You are scared of wrecking and retire. Yes. Uh, but people don't even have that racing intelligence and sim racing many times. They retire and immediately begin blaming. Yes. Instead of them reflecting on why the thing happened, they automatically point the finger at somebody else. <laughs> Joe says, you're not wrecking people in real life because of what can happen after the race to your face. To be fair, I didn't even think about that, and I got in a couple, uh, I got in a couple altercations. All right, back to Ben's video here. Getting too caught up in the moment and driving rashly. But Chris's video suggests this is happening on an almost industrial scale. In what are you doing? Racing series. No, see, that has nothing to do with patience. That has everything to do with lack of etiquette and understanding and spatial and situational awareness. You should never pull into the center of a track and stop, number one. You either stay still so that the people that are coming at you know where to move, or number two, Two, well, that's really the only option. Don't move. Wait until you are free and clear. You should be looking to your left. You should be looking at your relative to make sure that there's nobody coming. And we all make mistakes. But that isn't a mistake. Like, if he had started to try to get going and maybe he had gassed it too hard, spun out again, and got himself in a position, and it kind of messed somebody else up, that's a mistake. <laughs> uh, if... That just doesn't look like a mistake to me. That's just being completely unaware of what's going on. I don't know how you do that. A pandemic of impatience, which is ruining races <laughs> right, left, and center. Formula 4 races are 20 minutes long on iRacing. For at least the first half of the race, you have time on your side to make... Was it me or did that person not even slow down? What? Wait, what? Okay, he's in third gear. He sees a car sitting here. This person. Don't know who it is. For at least the first half of the... Okay. Did you see the RPM light happen? Look at... What in the... What, what are we doing? What the flying fuck is happening playback speed did you see the rpm light look he's this person is still accelerating out of the corner right there the rpm light comes on which means that they are still accelerating Why on earth? This is what I mean about people drive off the nose of their car. Why on earth would you be accelerating at this point, this far away from a car that is clearly stopped in the center track? Uh, where are you going to go? <laughs> yeah, if you lift, you lose. You're right, Martin. Yeah, Azaris, never lift. I, this is incredible. Off the 
not only did this person make a huge error by starting to move, this person has no forethought about looking ahead or up the track at all. Y you saw this coming out of the corner, my friend. If you're looking ahead, right, you're probably looking somewhere around here. I'm being generous. Okay, and I know this is happening fast. So right now, you, you can see smoke, tire smoke, and you can see that there is a car that is clearly not the right direction. Right here, I should not continue to see RPMs climb or a gear change happen. Maybe... It could be like gear change is just a reactive thing, right? So I could forgive shifting to the fourth gear. But let's play this at normal speed. This is driving me nuts. What? This is why online racing is fucking terrible. I'm not trying to shit on this person. I'm just saying that this is why I don't like doing it. Because, Formula four races right? Are 20 minutes we ain't going that fast. All right, I've already... I've. Right here, right here, I've already decided, like, from his content, or from his camera view, from his position, I've already decided at this point, I think I would have figured it out sooner than this, but I'm saying, like, mouse stops and everything, like, I hit pause. I've decided at this very point, there is a car that is almost in the center of the track, and I do not have much room to go this way. I am going to start applying the brake and slowing down as quick as I can without spinning out, without destroying the person behind me. Yeah, he just killed a man. But that doesn't happen. They just continue to accelerate. Shift to fourth. <coughs> Pardon me. This blows my mind. The Great Hadoken says, it's funny you've made that argument. It's just that I once read an article written by some former F1 driver, I forget who, and he argued that Michael Schumacher was so fast because he had never, he had never had a major crash. I always assumed since then that fear played a role. I think fear is a misnomer for what, I think of, again, I think people just say that, but it's kind of like saying, what is a chair? When we use language, it is often associated with so many other things that we don't really think about it. So when you say chair, all these other words and things come to mind, right? It might be brown, it might be metal, probably has four legs, probably has a seat, but it might have a pad on it, it might not have a pad, does it have a back? What kind of a back does it have? Um, and then you start trying to explain those things. Well, what's a leg? Well, a leg could be, you know, you see what I'm saying? So I think people use these terms as just an easier way of just explaining something quickly uh, instead of like actually kind of analyzing what they really mean. And it's not the fear of death. I would say probably way back in the day when drivers could get launched from cars, a little bit of respect was needed because you, again, you knew that if you crashed with somebody, that something bad could happen to the person. But the initial, that's not the initial thought. It's the byproduct of, I won't get to finish, or I might lose the race, or I might hurt my chance of finishing well. And that then, injury to yourself or somebody else is a byproduct of that thought process. So... I don't think you're wrong in your in your assertion. I just think that they're they they don't exactly mean it in that way. The fear of losing time is better than just wrecking. For many sim racers, wrecking is a lesser shame than losing places. <laughs> uh, broke his leg and was out much of '99. Still won five titles after that. Yes. Uh, Great Duncan says, "Yeah, but when I read the article, Schumacher was squeaky clean. It was a long. Oh yeah, okay. I'm all like, <laughs> yeah, no worries." Okay, sorry, we'll get past this part because this part's driving me nuts right here. The race, you have time on your side to make and he, moves for and he killed that car. If you've had an accident to By not lifting and slowing down, you not only destroyed yourself, you 
caused at least one car. Maybe there's another car to the side that drove into him. I can't quite tell. I don't remember from this angle. Uh, but you at least took yourself out, and you probably could have avoided that fairly easy just by slowing down. Claw back time and positions over the course of the race. Chris himself manages to do this in one of his sessions, claiming back 11 positions, having been dumped to the back of the grid on lap one. And this has nothing to do with driving too slowly or cautiously. You can very easily exercise controlled aggression and patience at the same time. And if you do Maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm dumb. Maybe this is, you know, why I'm not some pro elite level uh, sim racer. But this doesn't make any sense to me. Come out of the corner. You're coming. You see a car stop here. Okay. At this angle, not this person, but this person right here, I could see how maybe from this angle there might be a space. We're still accelerating. RPMs are going up. We're still accelerating. Same time. Still accelerating. And if you do Oh, now we're going to move to the left because now this guy is moved enough that we can tell that this way's blocked. Why weren't you slowing down as you were coming out of the corner? You could clearly see the guy was in the middle. Zarsis eSport sim racers have some of the worst driving standards ever. There are times where I question why, why people drive like they do in those things. Do, then you're overwhelmingly more like I don't know if he would have, this person would have avoided the other person careening off of the, the car that was in the middle of the track, but you didn't even give yourself a chance. I need to get better sim racers. Gotta lose. I've got to lose the least amount of time. I've just got to whiz by this wreck so, you know, I can make up a position on that other car. Oh, that other car crashed into the car that was in the middle of the road. Oh, now I'm out. Little bit of, I would disagree. I would say a little bit of patience in this right here would have saved you tremendously and you would have at least picked up two spots. And you're dramatically less likely to kill half the field in the process. What makes and then, you even more bold? And then automatically start turning across the track. He didn't didn't even stop, didn't even wait to make sure everybody was clear coming by. Once he got turned around and the car came to a stop, he automatically just turned. This is the worst. Esporters are not race car drivers. They are gamers or they would race for rope. <laughs> oh, Martin says it gets worse. Wildering is the penalties for getting damage in iRacing are very severe, more so than in lots of other sims. And yet seemingly this does not act as a Oh yo, damage does not deter anyone. Uh I think even racing with no fast repairs, I don't even know that that deters a bunch of people. Uh but I tell you what, it sure takes, you know, it sure lessens the field so you don't have those problems. But yeah, I, people just don't have that thought process, it seems like. Parent for reckless driving. Maybe it's the fact that the F4 series gives... What? What is happening? What are we doing? This car right here. I'm sure just kind of glanced to the right, said, oh, nobody's coming. That's not the whole story. You got to look at your relative. Look at your relative. It doesn't look like your car's damaged. If you would have just been patient, let these other two cars go by, you could have kept going. Surely plowing ahead, plowing headlong into another car like we just saw should result in an automatic DNF, not just severe seconds of damage. Yeah, I mean, it, that's hard to police, you know. I don't know how you would measure that. So if somebody spun across a track in front of you and you plowed into them, like, you could always file a protest, but that filing a protest at that point isn't... Uh, it'd be a tough one. I think the only way you'd get away with that 
the person that plowed in would not be at fault because the person that was sitting in the middle of the track moved and they would fault that person. But it, in my opinion, all three of those that we just watched, all three of those perspectives, they're all to blame. Everybody, a fast there you go. Clip the five car in the left rear. To be fair, I don't know how much the five car could have reacted because we don't get that perspective. And that would have been a hard one to dodge, especially since the Red Bull car was clear across the other side of the track over here. And then they just did that. That would be hard for this car to dodge. Pair, allowing them to teleport back to the pits and get straight back on with their Okay, here we, go. Whatever here we go. Here we go. Out of the corner. Okay, so we see the car here. No we we still we're still accelerating. Still accelerating and shifting. Joining. If you would have slowed down coming out of the corner once you saw the car sitting there, you might have given that other person that was sitting backwards on the track that thought it might be clear a chance to stop and you a chance to avoid because you were going slower. But you just pedal to the metal thinking that that other car is going to stay there. You're playing a high game chance of uh, like. That's a very high gamble on your part. Azar says, uh, might as well watch that old F3 race at Monza as a reference to IRL driving standards. Oh, well, yes, IRL people can be terrible as well. Martin, driving in a Red Bull is a warning sign for me. I'm staying as far as... Yeah, right? I was thinking more about the speed that they collided rather than whose fault it was or wasn't. I hear you. I think it'd be tough to determine, but I get it. Joe says you can't run a Red Bull theme without wrecking someone. It's in the It's in the TOS. If this person had come out of the corner... Let's see. Here we go. I see the car right here. I, at this point, I am already slowing down. I'm letting off and I'm hitting the brake to slow down enough because if I slowed down some, that person didn't know I was coming. They start backing up. Maybe they get to realize that I'm coming across, you know, that they're coming across the track as I'm coming towards them. I'm off the throttle. I'm giving them more time to stop the car to realize that they're coming across the track into my lane, and I'm giving myself more time to make a better evasive maneuver, but instead, hammer down and just pray. That's all it is. Hammer down and pray. Mercedes, this is true. <laughs> they're all guilty. As wow. you're seeing on screen now. If you've dropped the car, stay still, use your relative board and mirrors, and... Ben's not wrong. This car should have never moved. But this car should have not been accelerating. Move when the track is clear. Is it painful to watch more places slip away as... Wait, what happened there? Whoa! <laughs> Monster trucking. Hold on. Is it painful to watch more places slip away? As I'm of two minds here. I could see where you're saying that this might be a little too aggressive. Is it right? This might be a little too aggressive. But if you feel this person feels like this person isn't giving enough room heading into the bus stop. This person is then trying to avoid contact. Maybe they had contact. Maybe there was some uh, net code. Can't really tell here. But like, them jumping across, yeah, that's not ideal. But maybe they were trying to avoid hitting this car. And I don't, we didn't get to see like the lead up or the run. If they had lunged at the last second, then this is definitely this car's fault. But if this car had established position way down the track, this car needed to give more room. So this it's one to me is a little bit more racing incident-like. But this person could have given a little more room, might have given this person a little bit more room, and yeah, you might have given up the position, but you wouldn't be over here. <laughs> Turb jumping is the pro stat, yes. Yeah, this one's a little on the debatable side, because for me, 
I'm just not getting to see what came, what added up to that onto the straightaway and then into the bus stop. Yeah, there was a gap. Again, if, if this car... Da, 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 da. If this car, if they got here and hit the brakes and then this car darted to the right, that's this car's fault, 100%. But if this car had established position, you know, back here, then it's this car's fault for not giving room and crowding the 13 up and on and over the rumble strip, which then makes them launch into the air and takes this car out. So for me, we need a little bit more context to be like, this is egregious uh, stuff here. Slip away as cars uh, that's, for me, that's a, these two cars, that's a tough one. It is, but it's less painful than smashing into more drivers, ending your... Yeah, that one I'm not, that particular one, I'm not going to be too harsh on. What, 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 what do we got here? Whoops. All right. Grass mistake. We've we've all done it. Okay. I don't know why. Why did we show that one? That's just a mistake. I mean, it's a silly mistake, but it's a mistake nonetheless. I don't. Look, they're I mean, they're on the throttle. They just over. Yeah, they just got real greedy with how much speed they could carry through the corner. I mean, <laughs> it seems strange. What's up, Apex? Oh, whoops. I've, I went backwards. Is it painful to watch more places slip away as cars pass you? Hit of the wrong it button. Is, but it's less painful than smashing into more drivers, ending your race completely and the race. <laughs> Yeah, to me, that's just an overdrive. It's it's a silly mistake, but it's a mistake nonetheless. I don't, in the I don't think that should be included now, this in this. Kind of thing can the of sim for lots and lots. This is ridiculous. There's no reason for that whatsoever. People think that they exist on a physical plane in reality. You are talking about racing on a PC where you're dealing with ping and all kinds of stuff, like, you don't know how that's going to be received. I, give a little bit more room. If Here's my opinion. If you're that fast, you're fast enough to wait to make a better pass somewhere else. That's how I always look at my passes. We raced Darlington in the 87 Cup cars last weekend, and there was multiple times I could have passed Mark for the lead, uh... And probably gotten away with it, but really put the rest of the field and him and possibly myself into a major wreck. So I didn't. Now it worked out later in the race. Things happened and I I couldn't pass Mark later on. Mainly because I missed <laughs> I missed the commitment cone coming to pit road. That's a whole nother thing. Um, but my point is, is that if I'm that fast and I was faster than Mark... I could have, I was waiting to do the right move because making a pass could have resulted, had a much higher chance of resulting in a crash and wiping out a majority of the field than what ended up happening. I finished second. Oh, I can use the, to go back one for, oh, I didn't know that. I forgot. Thank you, Martin. I've been, uh, Joe says, F4 racing and iRacing has to be one of the worst for dumb crashes. The whole net code excuse really gets on my nerves. Give them more room if you have high ping. Yep. Now this kind of thing. This, so we can go like this. Oh yeah, buddy. Thanks, man. I forgot about this. This is just, again, driving off your nose, thinking that you, uh, I just, this, this is impatience. 
If you're that fast, you can pass them better in another corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just... We all make mistakes. This, to me, is an avoidable mistake, though. The enjoyment of sim racing for lots and lots of people, and it's totally unnecessary. Partly because of this kind of thing, I... Or just put a kick in for guys whose ping is co constantly bouncing. I mean, I don't disagree with that, but even then, I still... I still give a good amount of room, even if our, my ping, and I know that the other player that I'm racing against, their ping is low, I still give room. There's just... Unless you're side by side and just barely rubbing fenders, like there is, to me, there is no reason for that. <laughs> Case Master says, I join in and see a guy running another guy over. Apex says, you really should treat it like it's just another variable of racing. We definitely don't have as much, much variable as real. Yes. That's how I do it. I treat it as... That's just part of sim racing. I give a little bit more room than I would in the real world. Iracing has no ping limit, which is dumb as hell. I don't disagree with that either. I tend to treat online sprint races in the same way you might treat a six hour plus. Again, this is just a mistake. This is a, a poor mistake. Endurance race. I prioritize getting my car home in. I'm just not going to have, I'm not going to have any ill will for somebody making a mistake like that, especially when they don't take out anybody else. They just made a, uh, they just made a mistake. You didn't affect anybody else's race. You, d you just got overzealous with your corner exit. We've all done it. Like, you know, that to me, that shit happens. If they are calling latency now, nah, that did, yeah. No, he flat, yeah. He flat drove into that car. One piece, and I take pride in ensuring I get... Again, we're way too close. Two incident points as possible. I won't gave, gave a little right. gap. Nobody does. But I don't know what the orange car was doing. But if you would have lifted a little bit in the center of the corner, you could have drove right underneath them as the Red Bull car chased the car all the way up the track. Chris's video reminded me that if we all this again, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, yep. We probably all well, I was gonna call that a silly mistake, but then you took out another car, so uh, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> he just ran himself off the track, and in my day, you were just a lagger. This is PS4 Dead Man. Apex says I still miss inside sim racing. All enjoy our online racing a bit more. Well, this yep, exactly you just don't get what I'm new stuff. About firsthand, go and watch Chris's video in full. But be warned, it's not for the faint of heart. So Ben took clips off out of um, Chris's video. I don't know if I can stomach watching the whole video. Because what the fuck happened there? What? What in the? What? What are we doing? Hold on. What? Warned. Was that net code or did he spin the tire? Am I, am I stupid? I don't get it. And watch Chris's video in full. What are we but doing? We what was that? That I was gonna say the car moving like that's weird. That was probably net code. And to be fair, I don't know that I would fault either car for that happening. I think that's just an unfortunate part of It's not for the faint of heart. I wouldn't bl in my opinion, I wouldn't blame either driver there either. I I definitely would not. All right, so what have we learned? People just don't know how to avoid a crash. People don't know how to be patient and wait for an opening to rejoin. Uh, people don't know how to have patience and just not drive into somebody. This is going well. All right, so again, to get myself out of the way so that we know it's LaBrocca Sim Racing. And, uh, you know, if I do like these pieces. I am more into this kind of, you know, editorial kind of stuff than just watching people race. I know that some people like it.
Ben, I believe, does both. Um, so I like it when he does opinion pieces. So you can go watch that. Can I, I will. Let, uh, let me see if I can edit. Oh, I'm not on the same PC. I can't, actually. Because I'm using two PCs. I have no way of... I can link it afterwards in the description. Uh, but because... I'm using two PCs. I have no way of, let me think here for a second. I don't think I have a way of getting it over there. Regardless, I will, I will put it in the description. And then if this gets broke out into a video, I'll, I'll link it there as well. I tell you what, my satellite Wi-Fi internet's the best for our racing. Jeez. Okay, next one. So this one is inspired by Ben's video, which is inspired by Chris. This is, again, this is DJ YJ. Let's see hey guys, what's Justin to be said. Here. This is going to be the first and probably the only Tell me, Justin. video that I make. Because really down. the only thing that can get me this riled up is the race craft on iRacing. I can feel the seething rage coming from you. I'm just teasing. It's a joke. I'm just giving you a bit of shit. Perfectly fine. You're being uh, leveled and reasonable so far. Because right now in 2023, the race craft on iRacing as a whole is not good. So today okay. I just wanted to talk Tell about me. what is going on in iRacing, why there are so many wrecks, so many cautions, so many incidents, what is going on. But first, is I want low? to shout out Ben at Labroca Sim Racing because he made a video pretty much on this same topic a couple months ago. And I just kind of want to echo a lot of what I hear from him that on the road side of things from what I see on Oval as well. Because it is arguably a bigger problem in Oval than it is on road. And it's a worse issue than it has ever been in my opinion. And it's only getting worse. And first off, for those of you who say that I'm on my high horse for this, of course I'm on my high horse for this. Because there you go. I have been sitting on iRacing own it. for two, three years at this point. Own, own your high horse. That's okay. Above a A-class 4.00 safety rating for pretty much the entire time. I think the entire time. And when I see people who are dropping into C and D class through the truck series all the way down below, that's just like there are incidents for each one of those safety rating hits and that's gonna ruin people's experience every time it happens. To give you some context, I race mainly Arca, which has no cautions, which means that you always get a long run and there's less incidents in it than anything. And that's the main reason why I do it. I like driving the Arca car and I like a guaranteed long run because I hate parading around. I hate three lap runs followed by five. The worst part about oval racing is people not getting their shit together so you can have good green flag runs because that is at least on the the NASCAR asphalt oval side, that is part of it. You know, tire wear and all that, that plays a major part. If you're constantly under yellow, it is the worst. Lap runs. And with all of that, I have about a 1.5 incident per race ratio over my last two years. All right, so we've established that uh, he's a very safe driver. On iRacing. Whereas there are pro level iRacing drivers, Coca Cola series drivers, with six average incidents per race. And it all starts with the example that the top level guys set for everyone else. It all trickles down. So the premise of the video is that the higher level, if I'm understanding it right, the higher level drivers are influencing the driving style of people that are either getting in races with them and then racing when the splits are larger, racing in a lower rank, or people observing maybe like the Coca-Cola esports stuff kind of sounds like what we're getting at here. Case Master says, I did a paid race where out of 75 laps at Dega, we only did eight green flag. Oh my, oh my God, eight green flag laps. 
I would die. PS4 Deadman says, blah, oval hard, make head hurt. No, no, no. If you actually tried racing oval with people that knew how to run, it's way harder than people think. And we cannot use Daytona or Talladega as a good benchmark for that either. It's Dega. How are you that bad, right? Ban all the pros, Joe says. Make iRacing great again. Boom. All right, here we go. Oops. The best people in top split will set the example for everyone else. And then those people, when they maybe fall down to second split or whatever, they'll set the example for people in those splits and so on and so on. So when you're racing and you're one of the people who are an example for the iRacing community up top, and you are having six average incidents per race, that is not just ruining that race, you are ruining eye racing. I'll bring up some evidence, okay? So maybe this is a misspeak or maybe I'm not understanding, but six incidents, where I'm assuming these are X's, does not mean that you caused a yellow or crashed somebody. You could have bumped the wall, Maybe you bumped another car, but nothing happened. Um, I know those aren't like super, super light hits, but you can get X's without causing a yellow or destroying your car or somebody else's car. So maybe that's a misspeak. Maybe bringing out a yellow. I'm a little confused. So I took a data set from New Hampshire C Fixed on Monday, the last day of the week when everyone should already know how to drive the track, how things work there. And I took every single 3K SOF split from 2022 and 2023. And I have found between those data sets, over eight races per data set, there were over double the cautions in 2023 than to 2022. Now, my friend went in and gave us statistics. Luis, hello. Do people even pay attention to the number of incidents other drivers have? Rarely. Rarely. Yeah, New Hampshire is never is usually not a great track. Don't say X is Billy. Elon will buy our yes. That's such a dumb. We're changing Twitter to X. And they're posts now, they're not tweets. Ugh. <sighs> But bigger player base, though. Uh, Case says the top split in NIS race had 22 cautions. Dear Lord. 150 laps, 93 laps under yellow. In a, that's why I don't race that stuff. It People wonder why I like doing AI over racing with humans. Because I do have to say, though, the league thing we did, and there's just a handful of us in the league, and then the rest are filled with AI, so I know it's not a full field of humans, but we didn't, I don't think we had a yellow at all at 125 laps at Darlington. Darlington. It was amazing. It was awesome. But that's, again, finding people that kind of align with the way you like to race. Now that's probably extreme. It's probably not that bad across the board, but that gives you an idea. When you have double the cautions, you have half the amount of actual racing. And so these aren't instant, these aren't average incidents, which we were talking about before. This is cautions, period. My goodness. That is, that's rough. That's rough. Apex says, you don't pay attention to the number of incidents, but you could see their safety rating drop as a result. Yeah, the only time incidents get you in trouble is if you're on the verge of getting DQ'd and somebody, like, bumps you under yellow or something silly. Then people get mad. And when you have half the amount of actual racing, a lot of people are not going to want to show up to these races. Bro, I don't okay, even I do I will it. admit, yeah. it's not all eh. the people's no, fault. I think that the people have to be the solution regardless. And I think that the people are only somewhat at fault. 
The other thing that has caused a lot of this to happen in iRacing is the changes to the physics of the cars. In my okay. opinion, making the cars more draft heavy and draft dependent between the cup car and the truck specifically, that has caused a lot tighter racing, which puts people into those situations where they can potentially make a move to cause a wreck. You'll be hard pressed to. F so what are we advocating? Let me hear him out because I'm not quite sure with that point what you're advocating for. Find a restart at pretty much any track in cup or truck specifically that don't fan out to three, four wide before turn one. And it's ridiculous. Like, I guess it's kind of like that in real life, but you don't. No, it's definitely like that in real life. The problem is we're not winning anything. And that's something that kind of gets lost is people think they're winning something. You're not winning anything. Shut off a little early and just make the corner, get back in line, and if you're that fast, pass them later. But nobody has that mindset because they see the guys on TV do it and they're like, they go three or four wide, so I'm gonna go three or four wider. I think I can make this. Uh, the difference is those guys get paid a lot of money and they get paid a lot of money to win. You are getting paid no money. This is supposed to be a gentleman's kind of racing or you're supposed to have good sportsmanship. Nobody knows what that is. Um, uh, yeah, not nobody. I'm being hyperbolic, but very few people that sim race know what good sportsmanship is. Have net code like we do in real life. You can't approach these races exactly the same and expect there to not be wrecks. And they do wreck in real life anyways. So that goes to another point I have real life setting an example as well. I talked about the top level iRacer setting an example. Well, now we have people in real life setting an example that you have to go win everything. Win or you're in. That's the mentality in real life. Well, guess what? That carries over to i <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> right turn. Let's setting an what? example that. Okay, so we slam down in front of the 42 instead of just realizing that the 42 probably thinks you've left a lane open. I mean, unless the eight truck was getting sideways down the straightaway. You have to go. So then the eight's everything. trying to get a hold of it. When are Still you can't get a hold of it. And that's the mentality. The 42 gets underneath. In real life. Well, guess 42 gives a good bump and the eight takes, uh, takes the next exit to subway over here. But that carries over to Boom. eye racing too. Not. I, yeah, I don't know. I do think that there is a small percentage that probably view how real life, well, view how the esports drivers drive and think that they can do it. I think more people look to real life or watch real life drivers competing. Like we've watched that Max Verstappen video um, where he lost his mind and took out another car. I think people were way more influenced influenced by that than if I don't know what this truck race was, if that was like a top level truck race or whatever. Uh, I don't know how much people are influenced by that. I do think, though, that when you are in an environment that encourages uh, people to drive like that and there are no checks and balances, so then other people start driving like that because that's the only way they feel like that they can get ahead then yes, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, it's cyclical, it, it just, it feeds itself, feeds more bad driving. But that's, that's because people, when they, there's no standard. When you get onto iRacing, we think we have this, or any simulator, we think we have this competition system that will encourage clean driving and good sportsmanship and great racing. We do not. What we have is, uh... Here you go. <coughs> Pardon me. Here you go. Go race. Uh, you know, we're going to give you an X or demerit for dropping a wheel off or spinning out or hitting another car. But, you know, keep racing. There's no there's no incentive for people to learn good sportsmanship. Good race craft. Uh how to be spatially aware of your surroundings and what's going on, how to look ahead, not drive off the nose of your car. 
And I can't tell you the amount of bad takes I have seen from people that go, this person took me out. And it's totally the person's fault that posted it. It's unreal. Gran Turismo 7 car insurance claims has increased seven times since Max Verstappen incident. That's funny. Just in the Coke series, because now that they're winter in, you see some pretty crazy moves now that I don't even want to get into. But it seems like people don't value anything besides wins now in any sort of race, regardless of what the stakes are. And that I would agree with that. That's part of the problem is people aren't just satisfied with having a good race. Again, I'm speaking generically here. But people aren't good with just having a, a great race with somebody. It's I have to get to the front and by any means necessary. And the funny part to me about that is you're not winning anything. You're just pissing people off instead and not because you're good. People watch iRacing Pro Race. I did see a stat that there has been an increase in viewership. Didn't we cover that? Where there was an increase in viewership in actual uh, the iRacing uh, Coca-Cola races? Martin says, what if it would take two to three days to repair the car you wreck? Could that help? Now you can just e escape out and sign up for the next race in 60 minutes. The hard part of that would be the system to put that into place. And if you were at fault or were not at fault for the wrecking, like I'm not sure how it would be determined to do that. In theory, I agree with you, uh, but I don't know practically how you would implement that. That leads to another reason why I think iRacing is way too issue, harsh, as we and it's because I think that the skill pool is becoming very, very wide, wider <laughs> than it's ever been. I think you go out throughout the history of iRacing. At the very beginning, there were only really a select few people who could be considered at the top level. Then as you go along, this sort of 4K to 5K level kind of widens and widens and widens. And now you can have races with like three or 4,000 strength of field with most people that you have never even raced before or seen before. Because but isn't that what the iRacing system is supposed to encourage? Like, isn't that the whole point is to make it so that you get the widest pool of people possible because then it's supposed to put you with your skill set. I, un I understand the point that's being made, but I think that's the point of the iRacing system, isn't it? Because that's just how many people are becoming talented and becoming good. And that's great. That's awesome. But the problem is the majority of them just don't know how to run 15th anymore. They all expect to be winning. They all expect to be up front. And when Watch they the are mirror. in the mid pack, back of the pack, you. Yeah, I would say that that is this car just not being spatially aware. But you want to know what happened? Uh, probably, I'm not going to say for sure, but usually what happens is that car blames the car that was on the inside for taking them out when it's this car's fault. You established your lane. You can't, you can't move like that. Well, you can, but you're going to get wrecked. He's already running. They're already running each other down the track, right? They all expect to be up front. And when they are, you have to know that that car is there. Ooh, excuse me. You have to know that that car is there. You have to be aware. Are in the mid pack. But then that car is just, this is my line and I'm turning down and I probably expected that car behind to back out. Kind of pair of damage would be cool, but what if you only get a few races a week? Would kind of suck as an actual game in game mechanic. Yeah, there's, it's an, the premise is a good idea. But it, it would be, there's other problems and it would be very hard to implement. But I mean, that's what happens in real racing. I can't tell you the amount of times I got taken out in a heat race and I sat out the rest of the night. But we don't want sim, I don't feel like we want sim racing to mirror that experience because boy, does that fucking suck. Or like, I've done it in qualifying. I've crashed in qualifying and completely ruined my night. So you don't want that experience.
I get that. Um, so there has to be like a middle ground. I'm not sure what the answer for that is, uh, but I get I get the the sentiment is good. I just don't know if we could implement something like that without having a huge issue. Luis says, especially considering that people pay for a monthly uh, subscription, but I do agree that they have to find better ways to encourage clean racing. Martin says, or if you wreck a car, you'll have to buy a new one. Boom. Next, iRacing makes you pay for gas. Back of the pack, you name it, because maybe they're having a slightly off race, <laughs> or there's just too many good people in the race. Yeah, and then a yellow gets thrown for that. That was absolutely 100% a yellow that never needed to happen. Guy says, I think, unfortunately, a big problem is what people perceive as a good race. That is possible. There are so many desperate moves in these official lobbies. And then you can take that attitude to the lower splits, too. 2K drivers are better than they've ever been. 1.5K, 1.0K drivers are better than they've ever been because the level of iRacing as a whole is just shifting gradually and gradually up. And so those expectations of people who are used to being one number even though the overall skill level has been shifting, when you expect one thing, it leads to a lot of conflict and a lot of overdriving and a lot of desperation at all levels, not just top split. And that's something that you see throughout various- I was reading chat and all of a sudden I saw a truck go sideways. What are we doing? What's happening here? When you expect one thing, it leads to a lot of conflict and a lot of overdriving and a lot of desperation at all levels, not just top split. And that's something that. Did the, am I missing it? Did that truck get sideways? And a lot of the, overdriving and a lot of desperation at all levels, not just top split. And that's something. That is a weird. That's a weird wreck. Because at first I thought maybe this truck spun the tire off the corner. Because there's plenty of room between the truck and the wall. So your natural... This is what I mean by people don't know what... Like the etiquette is. You're not racing for money here. What should have happened is as you're trailing out of the corner, the truck on the outside should be trailing out appropriately. We all know that we go from inside to out. We're gonna swing wide out by the fence and then we're gonna go back down going into the corner. So what should have happened is the truck on the outside, it's hard to tell. If they spun the tire, then that's just a mistake. But if they tried to, to close the inside truck down, you know, kind of keep them squeezed down so that they don't get a run, it's not gonna work because most people will expect that the person on the inside will give you a truck or will give you a car lane or maybe even a lane and a quarter or a lane and a half on the outside. And then they're going to follow up the track accordingly. So this truck on the outside should be doing the same. They should be following the same arc that puts them out on the corner. Now, maybe this truck on the inside could have given a little bit more room, not chased up quite as soon, but I don't know that I would blame the truck on the inside for this because there's clearly space on the outside of the corner. Like this does, this is weird. This one doesn't make sense to me. a lot of desperation. Like he gets a great run on the outside. Like good job. And at all levels, not give just Give more room, give more room. Give, you just tried to hold that line. Where this truck is, Projected is going to be like right here. The left side is going to be like right here. Peace for Deadman says, I think iRacing should reduce the contact penalties for like tapping a door in a Mazda, but it kind of makes sense if you were in F1 cars. Sure. I mean, they kind of do that for dirt. The, the contact is less. Uh, for the X's, that is. Joe says, you watch these eSporters and the dumb moves Rex they do when it's online, but these same guys at an in-person event drive different. There's a reason why. That whole face thing. <laughs> By the way, I don't hate many people, but I have a history with Justin, so anytime he wrecks, I'm happy. Oh, I, I don't even know who this is. Can't use Grip Hack Lives, yep. 
I would not, my opinion would be, I would not blame, if we're in Justin's truck, I would not be blaming Justin here. I think you could have given a little bit more room, but I think it's reasonable to expect that the truck that is passing you on the outside is going to follow the arc of a normal corner. <coughs> Pardon me. That's something that you see throughout various streams, videos from people that are not just in top split. There's the same stuff going along. And funny enough, the cleanest racing comes from the people towards the bottom splits, because as long as they're able to wheel it around the track and keep it off the wall, keep it out from spinning, they know where they're at, they know their limit, and they stay within it. And that is more than pretty much any other split can say on iRacing right now. I'm recording this the same day that the Spa 24 is going on in iRacing right now and like 20% of the field was out within the first hour because everyone's trying to win the race in the first hour in a 24 hour race. I'm recording this in the same week that somebody in Coca-Cola series just doored the crap out of somebody for a win and just pretty much destroyed them, no race craft involved because they needed a win to get in. Heck, I'm recording this in the same week that Max Verstappen drove through an access road to wreck somebody intentionally, and so many people are defending it. He deserved it. Oh, yeah, the guy, they have a long beef. He deserved it. As we went over, what, a little over a week ago when we watched it, there is no justification, in my mind, for, for what he did. I don't care if they have history. Uh, the What happened did not justify Max just straight up torpedoing that guy. It. Well, you know who didn't deserve it? Everyone else who was involved some way in some form with that accident. The people that were obstructed, the people that got damaged from that incident. There's more people in that race than you and your enemy. Oh. Here we go again. From that incident, there's more people in that race than you and your. What happened to the black truck? There's more people in that race than you. It looks like the black truck was already sideways. We need more context than this, because to me, I don't know about you guys, but it looks like the black truck is already getting sideways. It's more people in that race than. To me, the angle of the truck looks like he got up the track and started slowly losing it, so I don't know if I'm gonna count any of this as bad or poor you and your enemy. driving. And that's why all of this retaliation stuff has never been allowed. Yeah. Because His phone rang. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hello? Oh. It affects more than you two. I mean, I, I guess racing as a whole is a selfish sport. It's you in a car. Like, it's not more alone and isolating experience than that. But when you think about the big picture of what iRacing is as a service, where does iRacing get its value from? iRacing doesn't get its value from its content. It's an engine started from a game in the 1990s, and a lot of the graphics are from 2008, and the physics, they're good but there are other games that are cheaper that have pretty much the same just as good physics what is what is the value of iRacing the value of iRacing well this is debatable because on the oval side not really on the road side sure oval side not so much comes from racing against other people so when people are destroying the whoa whoa We're, we're, we're in, including Grand Prix Legends in what, 98 or whatever that is? Okay. What? Help, help me. I racing comes from racing. Okay, so they're all sliding up the track except for the blue and black truck on the bottom, but the front truck and the this truck slide up. Did he move them up the track a little? <laughs> this guy was alive. All these clips are from just, I noticed that all these are from Justin. People, so. So wait, what is this truck doing? When. What? People are destroying the. What in the. F 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm confused as to what's happening here. Why did the eight truck... Comes from racing against other people. So what are we doing? When... So it looks like maybe the, the truck... And we, again, we need... We need more context. Did the truck in front, like, slide up in front of these guys, which the eight truck felt like messed him up? So you can already see he's using up his rear bumper. Comes from racing. So it looks like maybe this guy did a dive bomb, maybe he slid up the track in front of the eight truck. Against other people. Looks like the eight truck bumped him. So when maybe bumped him again, people are just and then it's just like, I'm done with you drawing the value of that. What's happening there? You need more context because that looks what is really the value of silly. Racing? Whoa. And of course, you did that and then you ruined other people's behind you race because you threw a temper tantrum in the middle of the corner. Good job. He's wrecking him because he lost the lead to a lap car. It's a lap, but that doesn't give you an excuse to frickin' dump him. Is he saying he's playing from... favorites because they're teammates because these looks like similar paint schemes? So the eight is your leader. This is second. And is he saying this guy's holding him up? Racing against other people. So when But this people... seems like a stupid proposition. You're second. Go race. Okay, so they're teammates. This guy, if this person's being a douchebag and holding you up to let their teammate, yeah, you can file a protest. I'm so confused. Yeah, you've got, it's a 40 lap race and you got 30 laps left. What are you doing? Go race. I mean, if you're, you're a lap down, 10 laps in, you probably had like a wreck and you're just trying to ride around. Who knows? Even if this person is purposefully trying to ruin this person's race, there is in no way you've screwed yourself. He won anyways then. Like, the best revenge would have been getting back uh, get by his teammate. I am so confused. <laughs> are destroying the... What on earth? Yeah, do this... I mean, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt because I have no idea what this truck, the history of this truck was. But even if he was causing this truck to leave, lose the lead of the race, you got 30 laps left. Just get underneath and go by and then go race this guy if you're that fast. What a bunch of babies. What a bunch of pussies. Like, of seriously. That, who does that shit? You're stupid. You are dumb. Keep, keep your man, keep your man emotions under control. And the best revenge would have been driving back by this guy. If that other truck for real screwed you up on purpose. The tail whips like a crocodile, right? I mean, he's turned down and then just, he, it looks like he cranked that wheel back the other way and just bonk. And then my irritation is, all right, you did that. And now the watch the mirror. Here you are flipping. Or maybe it's the other truck. But anyway, you're causing anymore. other trucks to get involved in your beef. Yeah, I would have drove it down into turn three and wrecked the teammate for the lead if I wanted to wreck someone. For Right? At least that would kind of make sense. This makes zero sense. Right. Be smart with the revenge. You're just dumb. 
bunch of I don't know. I mean, big babies. I'm saying this from here. a perspective from a guy. I don't. Who races I don't get that at all. Now, I might join a couple leagues because that's fun. Uh, but well, mommy said I was I the just, best, and that all the other kids need to respect the me. desire to <laughs> race in these races anymore, where I just know that I'm going to be pacing around for half the race, and I could be running open. That's a whole new experience for me, and that's something that I could very well jump into. Let me tell you, open doesn't make it any better. But I know that a majority of people who are into iRacing, getting into iRacing, they rely on these fixed series for their experience. And so we can't just say, oh, do another series because that is the series. And we, when. No, you can't do another series because this is a problem throughout. This is not just an isolated incident or just one particular car or even discipline. It's throughout the entire service, and it's not even iRacing. It's everywhere. So you can't just say, like, we'll do something else. Open has the same issue. It's just you don't have as many people, and your disparity is going to be much larger because people are creating their own setups. But then what's funny is then people start buying setups. That's a whole other thing. So then everybody ends up having close to the same setup, and you just created the problem all over again. PS4 is, where's my seventh place trophy? That's right. We should have a trophy for seventh. We destroy the series it's a game and just tell people, oh, go somewhere else. How are we going to expect the, the mentality? How are we going to expect to keep our user base the same way? It's, it's kind of, it's maddening to me. I could tell people to stop driving like idiots, but the people who drive like idiots don't care. They're watching this. They don't care. They're laughing. Then good, good for them. They're good for them. Great. But I guess what I want someone to get out of this is if you're on the fence and saying, man, these guys are all driving like idiots. Why don't I just start driving like an idiot? Because they're getting rewarded and I'm getting screwed. I, I just implore you, if you are tempted by that, just don't drive like an idiot. Even if other people are and they're getting rewarded. Because this is all a house of cards. And the moment that one too many people starts driving like an idiot. This is actually the problem they have in the Cup Series right now with the format and everything. Is Everybody has defaulted to driving like a... Not everybody, but the majority of the people have defaulted into driving like a bunch of ass hats. Um, I don't understand why people are scared of racing each other. Racing isn't dumping somebody. Racing isn't shoving somebody in the wall. Racing isn't spinning somebody out or doing any of that shit. Racing is good, hard uh, passes, you know, trading a little paint's okay. Uh, even a bump and run I'm okay with, but not destroying another car uh, and this is just, it's emblematic of the genre. It is a gaming thing. Um, it happens in real life too, but it's a mindset. It's all going to tumble down. And I don't know if we've reached that point yet, but at certain points it really does feel like it. All right, sorry, I've ranted for too long, but I just want the game to grow. I, I want iRacing to grow. I want people... Pro is this a f did did he make his own YouTube plaque back here? Did anybody see that? If if that's what that is, what is that? I can't see it. Something to may is that requested or presented to DJ EJ for something subscribers that you? That's hilarious. I like that. That's funny. That is awesome. To Good grow. on you. That's, I want people that's freaking to hilarious. understand the true value and charm of iRacing. And I don't think we're putting our best foot forward right now. Because yeah, just a race, potential have fun, person do what you enjoy. Could be watching Aggression any is video, okay as long as you stream, have the skill to hold it. Any, agree, anything make it three wide all the time in an old race. And they can say, wow, that looks fun. Or they can say, man, Exactly. Know stupid. your limits. And I think a lot of people who watch stuff right now are looking at it. Try not to run out of talent. What do I know? All right. Well, those were, those are pretty good. So again, I will link uh, DJ, EJ, and LaBroca in the video or in the uh, VOD in case you guys want to watch those on your own. But I think there, I think there were some pretty good points made. He looks a little like Larson. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I've talked about it forever now, or at least it feels like forever, where people just, the concept people have of what it is to actually race, and what moves are and are not in good faith and permitted, and those kind of, 
I can't tell you the amount of times I see a video or somebody posts something in a group or something. Oh, you know, this person wrecked me out. I'm like looking at it going, no, you caused that problem. I've called people out on it. And then people are like, no, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, no, you, you just can't do what you're doing there. That just doesn't work. Great Hogan says, I don't have any talent. I'm trying to find some. I understand the point, though. Yeah. But you know your limit, right? If you don't feel comfortable racing three wide, don't race three wide into the first corner because the guy in front of you is also taking it three wide. If you're not comfortable, then don't do it. Like, back off. And if you're fast enough, you can make the pass later. So, anyway, that's all for today. That's all I got. Thanks for hanging out. <coughs> Man, trying to get over. I am over being sick. It's just the cough. My throat dries out. But uh, yeah, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, yeah, don't don't put yourself into a position where you don't have the ability to get out of it. Case Master says, if you don't think you can do it, don't. If you don't think the others around you can do it, don't, right? But if you know you can do it, go. Get better ability. Yeah, I'm fine. Like, I feel okay. I just, like, I haven't been able to go to the gym in a week because I didn't want to be, A, I didn't want to be infecting people, but B, I didn't, uh, you know, you cough now in public and people are like, huh? So. You can do rally crossing, you can probably get a choice by going through, right? 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 Three wide for everybody. Anyway, I appreciate everybody for hanging out. Um, again, it's a call-in show. Somebody wants to discuss something outside of the times that I can do this. Uh, we can always schedule something. I appreciate everybody hanging out. Uh, it's been a fun stream. Take care. I will see you guys later. And remember... I've got a Twitch, so in Discord, I will be, uh, if I go live on Twitch with, you know, something like in the evening or on the weekend, I'll post it there too. Take care, everybody. Have a good rest of your Monday.